Music and Chaos have always been partners, each daring the other to cross new lines. But few took this challenge further than the man we're about to explore. When you go on tour with me, I mean, you, you, you got to expect that you're all, you know, somewhere down the line you're going to be in jail. A figure who wielded his art like a weapon, tearing through boundaries with a fury that shocked even the most jaded fans. He fought his audience, he hurt himself, and he even defiled the stage in ways that left scars on the punk scene. To him, nothing was sacred. He lived to provoke, to drag people out of their comfort zones kicking and screaming. His wild acts, ferocious opinions, and gritty music made him one of the most feared and controversial figures of the 80s and early 90s. His life was a whirlwind of bizarre choices and dark impulses, and his death followed suit, an exit every bit as chaotic as the life he led. Step into the twisted world of Gigi Aline, one of the most terrifying rock stars in the world. Early Life of Gigi Allen Jesus Christ, Allen was born on 29th of August, 1956, in Weeks Memorial Hospital in Lancaster, New Hampshire, as the younger of two boys of Merle Colby Allen Sr., 1923-2001, and Arleta Gunther, 1936-2019. His name was inspired by his father's claim that Jesus Christ had visited him and said that his son would be a significant figure similar to the Messiah. During his early years, Alan's older brother, Merle Jr., struggled to pronounce Jesus, so he fondly called him JJ, which ultimately evolved into GG. The family lived in a log cabin near Groveton, New Hampshire, which lacked running water and electricity. Merle Sr. was an unpleasant religious fanatic who terrorized his family, digging graves in their cellar, and threatened to utilize them. In an essay titled The First Ten Years, Alan described how his father considered homicide, expressed hatred for pleasure, and severely restricted their social activities. He described their living as primitive, resembling incarceration rather than family life. Alan stated that his mother attempted to flee, but was stopped by Merle Sr., who kidnapped him during their divorce procedures. Arletta filed for divorce in 1961, claiming her husband's deteriorating mental state. After the divorce, Alan and his brother were raised by their mother and stepfather in East St. Johnsbury, Vermont, beginning in 1966. As a kid, Alan struggled academically and was placed in special education classes, having to repeat third grade. His brother said that he was bullied for his nonconformity. In high school, inspired by the New York Dolls, he began attending classes in cross-dress. Reflecting on his upbringing, Alan described it as chaotic and full of danger, claiming that they engaged in drug dealing and thievery while pursuing music with several bands. Reflecting on his tumultuous upbringing, Alan remarked that it instilled in him a warrior soul, preparing him for the difficulties of adulthood. His early encounters with violence, rebellion, and solitude would later shape his notorious stage appearance and musical career. Look at G.G. Allen's tragic life. His wild lifestyle and substance abuse turned a promising career into chaos and despair. His fixation on death and extreme performances reflect deep internal struggles, serving as a cautionary tale about the consequences of unchecked mental health issues. Unique Personal Style Gigi Allen was no ordinary performer. He was a walking, raging shockwave, a human spectacle whose every move seemed designed to shatter taboos and rip apart the social fabric. On stage, he was as raw as it gets, stripped down to almost nothing, often naked or in just a jockstrap. He would cover himself in his own blood, urine, and filth, each action a bold strike against the idea of decency. For Gigi, his body wasn't just his own. It was a canvas, a battleground, a violent message he hurled at the world. He wanted his art to be an assault, a gritty punch to the gut that exposed the ugliness and messiness of life. Every inch of his skin told a story. His homemade tattoos, each one a chaotic scrawl of rebellion and self-loathing, marked him as an outsider. These tattoos weren't just decoration. They were declarations of war against the sanitized norms of society. When he tore into his songs, 
Each tattoo and scar spoke alongside him, screaming of a life lived on the fringes. His body became a manifesto of brutal honesty and wild individualism, a living testament to the chaos that defined his music. But Gigi's performances went far beyond shocking costumes or graphic displays. He turned every show into a battlefield, throwing himself headfirst into acts of self-mutilation, defecating on stage, and launching himself at audience members in a frenzy. This wasn't just to disturb, it was an invitation to confront the darkest truths of existence. He wanted his audience to feel something primal, something they couldn't ignore. In every performance, he unleashed a torrent of violence, anarchy, and bitter truths, creating a scene that was both exhilarating and terrifying, a glimpse into the depths of humanity that most people dared not look into. G.G. Allen lived to provoke, to disturb, and to drag his audience into the shadows with him, one brutal, unforgettable show at a time. Early Years Recording Career the Dave Clark Five and Mott the Hoople, two British invasion bands from the 1960s, had a big impact on Gigi Allen. In the early 1970s, Alice Cooper became a major inspiration. Initially a drummer, Allen also wrote many of his songs on acoustic guitar. In his mid-teens, he formed his first band, Little Sister's Date, with his older brother Merle, covering popular rock songs from bands like Aerosmith and Kiss. Their shared interest in punk rock was sparked by influential groups like the MC5 and the Stooges. After graduating from Concord High School in Vermont in 1975, Allen formed the band Malpractice with Merle, local musician Jeff Penny, and high school friend Brian Demers. He played drums for Malpractice until their breakup in 1977. Following this, he fronted the Jabbers from September 1977 to April 1984. His debut album, Always Was, Is, and Always Shall Be, was released in 1980 under Orange Records, where he not only sang but also played drums on most tracks. As tensions grew within the Jabbers due to Allen's increasingly uncontrollable behavior, the band disbanded in 1984. During this time, Allen's performances became notorious for their shocking content, which included self-mutilation and defecation on stage. Despite his chaotic lifestyle and controversial antics overshadowing his music career, he maintained a devoted cult following. Allen's legacy is marked by his extreme individualism and anti-authoritarian beliefs, often reflected in his lyrics. He is remembered as one of punk rock's most notorious figures, embodying a raw and rebellious spirit that challenged societal norms until his death in 1993. Mid-period and more extreme live performances G.G. Aline's live performances became notorious for their severe and rebellious character, starting with his first act of excrement on stage in 1985 at a show in Peoria, Illinois. This frightening scene was prepared. Fellow artist Bloody Mess remembered that Allen had taken X lax earlier, causing havoc as he defecated in front of a confused audience. The odor caused fear among concert goers, establishing feces as a regular feature of Allen's performance. G.G. Allen was deeply influenced by the raw, unvarnished spirit of country music superstar Hank Williams. He felt a strong connection to the themes of loneliness, sorrow, and self-destruction that persisted throughout both of their lives. His acoustic EP, The Troubled Troubadour, expressed this link in a warped tribute, merging his admiration for Williams' music with his own dark, rebellious side. Tracks like Scumfuck Tradition and Outlaw Scumfuck were more than just parodies. They were G.G.'s method of transforming traditional country cliches into something rawer and grittier, pushing the outlaw persona to new, unpleasant limits. Allen's performances went beyond just defecation. He ate excrement, smeared it on stage, and threw it at the audience. He also participated in self-mutilation, spraying blood on himself and into the audience. Because of the violence and mayhem that these shocking performances sparked, police were frequently called in, and venues were closed down. Allen's threats of suicide added another layer of intrigue to his performances. In 1989, he announced plans to commit suicide on stage during Halloween, but was incarcerated at the time. He continued to make such threats annually, but remained imprisoned each subsequent Halloween. When questioned about these threats, Allen suggested that true suicide should occur at one's peak, not at a moment of weakness. His final performance on June 27, 1993, ended abruptly after only three songs due to a riot. Following the show, he overdosed on heroin at a friend's apartment. 
leading to his death the next day. Allen's life and performances remain a testament to his commitment to challenging societal norms through extreme acts of self-expression. Influence on other artists The impact that Gigi Allen has had on other musicians is profound and varied, especially in the fields of shock rock and punk music. Often regarded as a precursor to later shock rock icons like Marilyn Manson and Andrew W.K., Allen's willingness to push boundaries has inspired a generation of musicians to explore themes of chaos, rebellion, and transgression in their work. His extreme performances, characterized by acts of self-mutilation, coprophagia, and violence, set a precedent for artists who sought to challenge societal norms and provoke audiences in similarly shocking ways. Allen's approach to performance art has also left a lasting mark on the punk rock aesthetic. He encouraged artists to embrace rawness and authenticity over polished production, which resonates strongly within underground music scenes today. You go on tour with me, I mean, you, you, you got to expect that you're all, you know, somewhere down the line you're going to be in jail. His disregard for conventional performance standards has inspired countless musicians to prioritize emotional honesty and visceral expression in their art. This ethos is evident in the work of various punk bands that have adopted a similar do-it-yourself mentality, often eschewing mainstream expectations in favor of a more authentic representation of their experiences. The legacy of Gigi Aline is further reflected in the way his music and persona have permeated popular culture. His life story, marked by controversy and defiance, continues to captivate artists across genres. Bands such as CKY and Faith No More have covered his songs, paying homage to his impact on the music scene while also highlighting the absurdity of his persona. This blending of admiration and critique showcases the complex relationship many artists have with Allen's legacy. Moreover, Allen's philosophy of extreme individualism and anti-authoritarianism resonates with many contemporary musicians who grapple with similar themes in their work. His belief that art should confront audiences with uncomfortable truths has influenced a wide range of artists who seek to reflect societal issues through their music. This connection underscores the enduring relevance of Allen's message in today's cultural landscape. G.G. Allen's influence on other artists is profound and enduring. By challenging societal norms and pushing artistic boundaries, Allen has left an indelible mark on the music world that continues to inspire new generations of artists seeking to explore the darker aspects of human experience through their art. Philosophy and Beliefs Kevin Michael, G.G. Allen was a quintessential figure in the punk rock scene, known for his extreme anti-authoritarian stance and a philosophy steeped in narcissistic nihilism. He believed that all forms of authority were inherently illegitimate, viewing coercion as a fundamental violation of personal freedom. You can, at 35 years old, sleep with 16, 12, 13-year-old girls. This belief was not merely theoretical. It permeated his lyrics and public persona, where he consistently challenged societal norms and expectations. GEG's disdain for conformity was evident in his performances, which often included acts of self-mutilation and public defiance. His philosophy was one of radical individualism, where he rejected societal constraints and embraced a chaotic lifestyle that prioritized personal pleasure above all else. Allen's philosophy is epitomized by his idea that if nothing actually matters, people should do whatever makes them happy, regardless of the consequences. This worldview drove him to engage in progressively self-destructive behavior, which he saw as a type of freedom from society's limitations. He famously said that comfort and conformity were his worst enemies, pushing for a life lived on the brink. GG personified the concept of living fast and dying young, fully aware of the risks yet choosing to accept them anyhow. His life became a monument to the extremes of human behavior, demonstrating both the attraction and hazards of unrestricted freedom. My body is the rock and roll temple. My flesh, my blood, my, my fluids, it's like a communion to my people. Despite his rejection of societal norms, GG's philosophy also revealed profound loneliness. His extreme individualism often isolated him from others, leading to a life marked by misery and despair. He was consistent in his selfishness, applying it universally to every aspect of his existence. This self-centered approach ultimately left him feeling profoundly alone, accepting this solitude as a natural consequence of his beliefs. 
In many ways, he exemplified the idea that the pursuit of instant gratification can lead to enslavement by one's own desires and vices. G.G. Allen's life was characterized by contradictions. He vehemently rejected material possessions and societal acceptance while simultaneously engaging in behaviors that sought attention and notoriety. He challenged the notion that happiness could be derived from wealth or success, yet he failed to recognize that his pursuit of pleasure through excess did not lead to fulfillment. Instead, it served as a prison constructed by his own vices. His legacy is one of both respect and horror. He is remembered for his brazen disregard of society standards while also acting as a warning about the consequences of living without bounds. His life exemplifies the intricacies of freedom and uniqueness, demonstrating how unbridled passions can destroy rather than liberate. G.G. Allen's narrative serves as a sharp reminder of the narrow line between artistic freedom and self-destruction in punk culture. Infamous Stage Antics The wild and rebellious nature of G.G. Allen's live performances is legendary, frequently pushing the limits of what is deemed appropriate in music. Known for performing in minimal clothing, sometimes just a jockstrap, he would engage in acts of defecation, self-mutilation, and violent confrontations with audience members. His infamous show at the Cavity Club in Austin, Texas, exemplifies this chaos. He managed to clear the venue within just 24 minutes due to his outrageous behavior, which included hurling feces and inciting near riots among concert goers. Allen's antics were not solely for shock value. They were part of a carefully crafted persona as the last true rock and roller. He aimed to reclaim rock music as an art form of rebellion, reflecting his belief that music should challenge societal norms and provoke thought. Despite his violent reputation, those who interacted with him offstage often found him to be surprisingly intelligent and personable. One of the defining moments of his career occurred when he first defecated on stage in 1985 during a performance in Peoria, Illinois. This act sparked chaos as audience members fled the venue, unable to cope with the overwhelming stench. From that point on, defecation became a regular element of his performances, contributing to his notoriety as a performer who would do anything to elicit a reaction from his audience. Allen's shows were characterized by an unpredictable mix of music and mayhem. Reports from attendees describe scenes where he would rub feces on himself and even assault audience members. In one instance at the Cavity Club, he took a crutch from a fan and swung it like an axe while pushing others away, creating a frenzy that led to police intervention. His performances often culminated in violence, with Allen himself frequently ending up injured or arrested. Ultimately, G.G. Allen's legacy is one of radical defiance of conventional standards, capturing the essence of punk rock's anti-establishment ethos. His life and performances have remained a source of intrigue and horror in music mythology, demonstrating both the appeal and danger of pushing musical boundaries. The Rise and Fall of G.G. Allen From Infamy to Imprisonment in late 1989, G.G. Allen faced a significant turning point in his tumultuous life when he was arrested and charged with assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The incident involved a female acquaintance who accused Allen of committing heinous acts during a night that began with consensual sexual activities but escalated into violence. Allen initially denied the charges, asserting that the woman was a willing participant and that their actions were mutual. He admitted to cutting her, burning her, and even drinking her blood, but claimed she reciprocated these acts. The case drew considerable attention due to Allen's notorious reputation as a shock rocker known for his extreme performances. During the trial, inconsistencies in the woman's statements were noted by the judge, which led to speculation about the validity of her claims. Despite these inconsistencies, Allen ultimately opted for a plea bargain, reducing his charge to felonious assault. This decision resulted in his imprisonment from December 25, 1989 until March 26, 1991. While incarcerated, Allen experienced a period of reflection and reinvigoration regarding his life and artistic mission. It was during this time that he wrote the G.G. G. Allen Manifesto, outlining his beliefs and intentions as an artist. In his manifesto, he expressed his extreme individualism and anti-authoritarian views, 
promoting lawlessness and violence against societal norms. He believed that his body was a temple of rock and roll, where his flesh and bodily fluids symbolized communion with his audience. Allen's time in prison did not quell his desire for notoriety. Instead, it fueled it. He continued to make plans for his return to the stage, including aspirations to build what he called a real underground rock and roll army. His ambition was to shock the world with performances that would challenge societal boundaries even further than before. Documentary and Media Representation The documentary Hated Gigi Allen and the Murder Junkies, directed by Todd Phillips in 1993, offers a profound exploration of Gigi Allen's tumultuous life and career. This film serves as a critical lens into his extreme lifestyle, showcasing not only his music but also the chaotic performances that defined his persona. Running at just 53 minutes, the documentary features concert footage, interviews with Allen, band members, friends and fans, as well as scenes from his confrontational performances. It captures the essence of Allen's philosophy and motivations, providing insights into the mind of a man who sought to challenge societal norms through shock and provocation. The film includes raw footage of Allen engaging in his notorious acts, such as defecating on stage and physically confronting audience members. It also highlights quieter moments, like Allen playing an acoustic version of Warren Zevon's Carmelita, which contrasts sharply with the chaos of his performances. This juxtaposition adds depth to his character, illustrating that beneath the outrageous exterior lay a complex individual grappling with personal demons. Throughout his life, Allen's actions drew considerable media attention. His outlandish antics frequently drew sensationalist attention, cementing his status as one of punk rock's most divisive individuals. His performances were regularly portrayed in the media as shocking, with emphasis on features such as indecent exposure and violence. This characterization frequently eclipsed his musical accomplishments, leading many to regard him more as a provocateur than a real artist. Despite this sensationalism, Allen's influence on punk culture is undeniable. His willingness to push boundaries has inspired countless musicians and artists who seek to explore themes of chaos and rebellion in their work. The media's fascination with him also reflects broader societal interests in transgression and the limits of artistic expression. The documentary Hated was crucial in developing Allen's posthumous cult following. It has been re-released several times, including special editions with bonus footage and insights into his life. The film not only depicts Allen's final days, but it also offers a reflection on the nature of fame and the cost of artistic integrity. G.G. Allen remains a polarizing figure whose life was characterized by extreme behavior and artistic defiance. The documentary Hated G.G. Allen and the Murder Junkies encapsulates this complexity, offering viewers an unfiltered look at a man who lived on the fringes of society and art, forever challenging our perceptions of both. Mental Health Struggles Throughout his life, G.G. Allen battled serious mental health problems that were made worse by substance abuse and fueled his erratic conduct. Diagnosed with a mixed personality disorder characterized by narcissistic, borderline, and masochistic features, Allen's mental health challenges were evident in both his personal life and performances. His upbringing played a crucial role in shaping these struggles. He endured a traumatic childhood marked by an abusive father who threatened the family with violence and instilled a deep-seated fear and mistrust of authority. As he grew older, Allen's behavior became increasingly erratic. He was known for his aggressive antics on stage, which included self-mutilation and violent confrontations with audience members. These actions were not only expressions of his artistic philosophy, but also manifestations of his inner turmoil. His lyrics often reflected themes of violence, misanthropy, and nihilism, further illustrating his troubled psyche. Substance abuse was a significant factor in Allen's life, as he openly consumed alcohol and various drugs without regard for the consequences. He embraced this lifestyle as part of his identity as a rock musician, claiming that it was essential to his artistic expression. His addiction to heroin and alcohol led to numerous legal troubles, hospitalizations, and periods of incarceration. Despite these challenges, he rarely sought help for his mental health or substance abuse issues. Ultimately, G.G. Allen's struggles culminated in his tragic death 
from a heroin overdose on June 28, 1993. His passing was not entirely unexpected given his reckless lifestyle and mental health issues, leaving behind a legacy that continues to provoke discussions about the intersection of art, mental health, and substance abuse in the punk rock community. Death Ritual GG Allen wasn't just a man. He was a live grenade, with his own fingers clutching the pin. To him, death wasn't a distant fear but a calling, a death ritual that he envisioned as the grand finale of his life's performance. He spoke with a feverish certainty about wanting to die on stage, in a blaze of chaos and pain that would seal his commitment to his art. For Alan, death was the ultimate act, an inescapable climax to a life spent tearing through every boundary. Each year, he declared his intent to end his life before a stunned audience, zeroing in on Halloween as the fateful night. But fate, or perhaps poetic irony, landed him in jail each Halloween, thwarting his macabre promise. In interviews, Alan dove deep into his twisted logic on life, death, and fame. He believed that suicide should happen at a person's peak, a final display of strength, not an act of surrender. He wanted to hurl himself into the afterlife at his fiercest and unbreakable spirit challenging even death. This wasn't just showmanship, it was a vision, a brutal philosophy where life and death became art. His last notorious appearance on The Jane Whitney Show was a chilling glimpse into his fractured mind. GG didn't just want to end his own life, he wanted to bring his fans with him on that journey, pulling them down into the dark with his words like the Pied Piper of Punk. His clenched fists, cold stare, and wild threats made it clear that he saw death not as the end, but as his greatest, most terrifying performance. He would die as he lived, unfiltered, untamed, and unforgettable. The Final Days of G.G. Allen From Last Show to Untimely Death G.G. Allen's life came to a tragic end on June 28, 1993, following a chaotic final performance at the gas station, a punk venue in Manhattan. His last show, which took place on June 27, was marked by violence and disorder. According to eyewitness accounts, the performance ended abruptly after just three songs when a melee erupted in the crowd. Frustrated and agitated, Allen exited the venue and led a group of fans through the streets of New York for nearly an hour. After wandering the neighborhood, Allen and his companions ended up at the apartment of Johnny Puke, where they continued to party and use drugs. It was during this time that Allen ingested a significant amount of heroin. Tragically, he overdosed and slipped into unconsciousness. In the early hours of June 28, Puke noticed that Allen remained motionless in the same spot where he had left him. Disturbingly, he posed for Polaroid photos with Allen's lifeless body before finally calling for an ambulance. Upon arrival, emergency personnel pronounced G.G. Allen dead at the scene, just two months shy of his 37th birthday. Allen's funeral took place on July 3, 1993 in Littleton, New Hampshire at St. Rose Cemetery. His body was dressed in his iconic black leather jacket and trademark jockstrap, reflecting his outrageous persona even in death. The funeral itself became somewhat of a low-key gathering or party among friends and fans, embodying the chaotic spirit that defined his life. G.G. Allen's death marked the end of a controversial and tumultuous career characterized by extreme performances that often blurred the lines between music and mayhem. He was known for his shocking antics, self-mutilation, defecation on stage, and violent confrontations with audience members, which earned him notoriety as one of rock music's most infamous figures. His life was a continuous struggle against societal norms and expectations, which he expressed through both his music and his outrageous public persona. In retrospect, G.G. Allen's legacy is one of both fascination and horror. He remains a symbol of punk rock's rebellious spirit and its potential for self-destruction. His untimely death serves as a poignant reminder of the darker side of fame and the lengths to which some artists will go to express their individuality and defy societal conventions. Public Perception Public perception of G.G. Allen is notably polarized, with opinions varying dramatically among fans and critics alike. Some individuals regard him as a visionary artist who pushed the boundaries of performance and music, viewing his extreme actions as a form of raw expression that challenged societal norms. They argue that Allen's performances were not merely acts of chaos, but rather a deliberate commentary on the human condition 
reflecting the darker aspects of society that many prefer to ignore. This perspective often highlights his ability to evoke strong emotions and provoke thought through his outrageous antics, suggesting that he was an artist ahead of his time. In contrast, many others regard Allen as a reckless provocateur whose actions were destructive and irresponsible. Critics argue that his lyrics contain misogynistic and aggressive undertones, which lead to a culture of violence and contempt. For these people, Allen's conduct during performances such as self-mutilation and feces overwhelmed any musical ability he may have had. They argue that his activities were not creative but rather harmful and demeaning to himself and everyone around him. This viewpoint raises ethical concerns about artists' responsibility and the potential impact of their acts on audiences. During his lifetime, Gigi Allen became a media sensation largely due to his outrageous behavior. His performances often attracted significant attention leading to sensationalized coverage that focused more on his shocking antics than on his music. This duality, being both a musical figure and a spectacle, continues to spark debate about the nature of fame in the punk genre. Some argue that this focus on spectacle detracted from the appreciation of his music while others believe it was integral to his identity as an artist. The fascination that Allen evokes in both admirers and critics also complicates his legacy. Many are drawn to the morbid curiosity surrounding his life and performances, viewing him as a figure who embodies the extremes of punk rock culture. Documentaries about him often explore this duality, showcasing how he navigated the line between art and personal destruction. Ultimately, G.G. Allen remains a controversial figure whose life and work provoke ongoing discussions about artistic expression, morality, and the impact of performance art on society. His ability to elicit strong reactions, whether admiration or disgust, ensures that he will continue to be a topic of conversation long after his death. At the end, we remember G.G. not as a hero or a villain, but as something far more haunting, a man who bore his scars for all to see, who dug deep into the ugly truths that most of us run from. In his relentless quest for authenticity, he became a cautionary tale of freedom turned chaos, of passion turned pain. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments.